BC Calculus, Lesson 1.6 from Taylor and Shaw. Here we're going to go into, and this starts getting interesting for me, is that now we're taking what we've learned so far and we're applying it. Applying to something that people are doing in physics and just get an uh, intuitive sense of what the calculus does for us. So we're going to deal with the position function, velocity, and acceleration. And then also we'll show you calculator differentiation. I'm going to go off the sheet a little bit because we use the TI Inspire. So first of all, the position function, that's going to tell us where we are at any given time. A lot of times we'll see S of T. We'll see X of T, which means that we'll probably be moving on a horizontal line like the x-axis, and y of t, which means that we're going to be moving up and down on the y-axis. Velocity function, the rate of change of the position. Usually we call it v of t. Velocity is positive for upward or rightward motion. So that depends if we're y of t or x of t. And then negative for downward or leftward motion. Acceleration function. Rate of change of the derivative or the derivative of the velocity. So if we take the rate of change of the rate of change, that's what's going to give us the acceleration. Initial position is what happens when we start at t equal to 0. Now what we might call this then is s of 0 or we might call this x of 0, or we might call it y of 0. All those things would be represented by our initial position. Then initial velocity would also be at t equal to 0, and so that might be v of 0. Initial acceleration you might include as well. Speed, it's the absolute value of the velocity. Velocity gives us a direction, positive or negative, Speed, we disregard which direction it is in. Displacement tells us the net change in position. And it's going to be the final position minus the original position. And then total distance. Total distance takes into account that you go forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards. We find the total distance traveled. For instance, if you're in your car, how we travel? Forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards. Displacement, an example of displacement, if I go to the store and go back home, my displacement's zero. My total distance, however, is twice the distance from my house to the store. So those two quantities a lot of times are different. Example number one. I'm giving you a position function. So this is the position of a particle at any time t. I want to find V of T, I want to find A of T. Well, V of T is equal to S of T, or I should say S prime of T. And so that's going to be 3T squared plus 1. That would be my velocity function. Then my A of T will be equal to v prime of t, which is s double prime of t, which is going to be equal to 6t. So that's all it is. Velocity is the derivative of the position function. Acceleration is the second derivative of the position function. Got a lot of dots going on here, sorry. Now we get into all the fun stuff all the different applications. So say for instance, we do have a position function based on this, of an object moving on a horizontal line. Now what we want to do is answer all these different kinds of questions. They do tell us that we have feet. Time units are measured in seconds. So what is the initial position of the object? So we want to know what S of zero is. So if I plug in 0, I'm going to get 24. Just plug it in right there. And then what is the velocity of the object at t equal to 1? Well, they asked us for velocity, so we have to go ahead, and, go ahead and find velocity. So v of t is equal to 3 times 16. I'm going to be stretched on that. And so now if I take 
and I do V of of 1, I'm going to get 48 minus 72, which if I can do this right would be 24. Now I did forget to put units on the first one, and if I do put units on the first one, this would be feet. Now since we're doing velocity, velocity is a rate of change, and so we divided feet divided by seconds. So for this one, velocity would be negative 24 feet per second. And then for number four, with number four now, we are going to do the speed. We don't use S because that's already our position function. It's going to be the absolute value of the velocity at time one, which would be equal to 24. I just take the absolute value of this one over here. And that would also be in feet per second. But I ignore the direction. Velocity tells us direction. Speed, we ignore the direction. Then number five, what is the acceleration of the object at t equal to 1? Well, I must go ahead and find a of t. a of t is going to be the derivative of my velocity up here. So I'm going to get 96 t minus 72. And then if I do a of 1, that is just going to be 96 minus 72. If I can add and subtract here, oh my goodness, 24. The question is, is what units do I put on this? Well, now this is the rate of change of the rate of change. So I've taken feet per second and I've divided by more seconds. So what we write for this is feet per second squared. For you physics people, that's pretty straightforward for you. For you people with non-physics, maybe you're going to have a little bit of trouble struggling with that. But each time we take a derivative, we're going to increase the denominator by one more unit value in a multiplicative sense. Then number six, when is this object at rest? That means our velocity is equal to zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 48 t squared minus 72 and set it equal to zero. If I solve that, I jumped ahead of here a little bit on you, and I missed this t here but I get 24t outside and then 2t minus 3 on the inside. If I set each one of these equal to 0, I'm going to get t equal to 0 and 3 halves. Those are the two times when my velocity will equal 0. What kind of units do I put on this? Well, time is in seconds. When is this object moving right? Well, we do know that if I set up a little number line for our velocity, v of t, I have zeros at 0, and I have zeros at 3 halves. What happens is that the zeros that I got from number 6, back over here, that's going to split up where I'm positive and negative. That's what zeros do. So if I realize that this is a quadratic that's positive, negative, it's going to go somewhere like this. It's in, it opens up positive, I should say. And so if I take values, this would be velocity positive, this would be velocity negative, this would be velocity positive. We did some of that sketching in um, pre-calc. So the values where this thing is uh, moving to the right would be t less than 0, and, or should I say or, t greater than 3 halves. Why? And we should be able to justify. This would be because velocity is positive. Moving to the right means velocity is positive. Justify. If I ask you to justify, then you will have to give a reason. 
and that's the reason there. When is the object moving left? Well, that's going to be in between 0 and 3 halves. Why? Because velocity is negative. And I should put seconds on those and seconds on these. Put the units on there. Number 9. What is the velocity equal to 54? Well, take your velocity, which is 48t squared minus 72t, and set it equal to 54. This is a quadratic. However, just go to your calculator. You can solve this. So this would be negative 549, and you also get 2.5. 049 seconds. So you can use your calculator to go ahead and solve that. Number 10, what is the displacement? Okay, displacement is just really your final minus your initial. So it's going to be S of 2 minus S of 0. And if I do both of those values, that'll be 8 minus 24. You can plug those in and see that, and that would give me negative 16 feet. Put the units on that. That means I change by negative 16 feet. That doesn't mean the total distance that I've traveled, but it just means from my final to my initial, I changed by negative 16 feet. Now number 11 does ask for total distance traveled. Do I get the same answer as I do for number 10? Let's see. Well, the velocity, remember, up here we had a change where the velocity is zero at three halves. So what I like to do is set up a t-chart. And with this, I'm going to put in a starting value. I'm going to put in a finishing value. And I need to put in a turning point. This is a turning point because my velocity is zero there. It's also zero there, but usually we just look at these particle problems starting at time equal to zero. Then I go put in my position at each one of those times. So I get 24 here. I get negative 3 here, and I'm going to get 8 here. Remember, I'm plugging into S of t, not V of t. If I plug into V of T, I'm going to get zero for this turning point and, you know, because my velocity is going to be zero. Now what we want to do is find the total distance between each one of these. So if I go from 24 to negative 3, just take the difference, and that difference would be 27. Take the difference here, that would be negative 11. However, we're finding total distance. Distance is always going to be a positive quantity. So then this would be 27 feet. This would be 11 feet. What's my total distance traveled? That would be 38 feet. Now, how does that compare to the shrunk down? I don't know why. But how does that compare to my negative 16? Are they, the diff are they different or the same? Well, yeah, they're different because I started at 24, went back to negative 3, and went back to 8. This right here is my displacement. This right here is my total distance if I add these pieces up. This piece is 27. This piece is 11. So that's what's happening. Displacement in here, total distance travel would be measuring along that line. So that's the difference that you do have to make out of this. So 1.6 continued. The graph at the right shows the position of a radio-controlled model car. Now what's going to happen is that you've got to remember that velocity is the instantaneous rate of change, which is our derivative. Derivative is the slope of the tangent. So if I can look at slope, that will tell me which rates are greater at certain times. If you can do the slope of the tangent, then you're going to be in business. Okay, was the car going faster at A or B? Well, that's when we need to look at the slope. So if I look at the slope here, and I look at the slope here, which one would be steeper? I think that you can see that it's going to be at B. It's a greater slope. 
And then how about 13? When was the car stopped? Car stop means that the slope is zero. Well, if I would go like this, my slope right here is zero between C and D. So I'm going to be stopped on the interval, could be closed or it could be open, from C to D. And then 14, at which point was the car's velocity the greatest? Velocity, remember, is positive or negative quantity. So I'm only looking for positive quantities. And so that's going to be here at my B. Now speed could be positive or it could be negative. Now if I look over here at E, which one has a steeper slope, at B or at E? I kind of over accentuated there. But at E, the slope has a, a higher magnitude at E than it is at B. And remember, though speed is absolute value, so it doesn't matter that this value here is going to be negative. Vertical motion. When we talk about vertical motion, a lot of times they give us equations that deal with gravity. So if I find the initial velocity, we've got to find velocity. Velocity is the first degree derivative of s. And so that's going to be negative 32t plus 48. So I just do each term there. And then the initial is going to be v of 0. And when I do that, I get 48. What units would I put on this? Well, it says feet, and it's in seconds, so it's going to be feet per second. Get used to writing these units. They tell you a lot. At what time does the ball hit the ground? Well, that's just when my position function is going to be equal to 0. So negative 16t squared plus 48t plus 60 is equal to 0. Now there's different ways to solve this. You can factor out a negative 16, you can go ahead and graph it. But I'm going to do it this way and then we can factor it. Sometimes they're factorable, sometimes they're not. So if I factor and figure all this out, I get five and I get negative two. What's wrong with negative two? Well, negative two is not a time that we're gonna be dealing with because it's, it's after zero that we wanna look at. So the five works under those circumstances. Then 18, what, is the, what, what time does the ball reach its maximum height? Well, this is going to be where my velocity is equal to zero. So I set my velocity equal to zero, and then I'm going to go ahead and solve. So I get negative 32t is equal to negative 48. So t is equal to three halves, ooh, three half seconds again. That's unusual. We are going to reach our maximum height at three half seconds because the velocity being zero, if I throw the ball up, velocity being zero would be a horizontal tangent line, would tell me the peak of the height of this ball. And then when the velocity is zero. For the calculator portion and learning the calculator, I'm going to put that in a different video because it's hard for me to do it under this platform that I do have. So look for that video on the website to figure out how to use the TI Inspire to do derivatives. Thanks very much. Have a great day.